one-sided limits are actually relatively easy to adjust to. The, the idea of a one-sided limit. So let me show you what we would do. If we wanted to look at, at what happens as we approach 3 from just one side, so from numbers less than 3, well this would mean that, that as we're getting closer and closer to 3, the function is getting closer and closer to the height of that hole, which, which is labeled as 4. So, if we wanted to indicate that with you know, notation, we would write the limit as x approaches 3, and we'd write a little negative superscript, just like that, of f of x, our function here, and this would be equal to 4. So the limit from the once, just from one side, you just look at, at what the function is approaching as you're moving closer and closer to, to 3 from just that one side, or whatever number you're given. In this case, it's 3. Okay, and then the same thing from the right side, the limit as x approaches 3, and then we just write a positive superscript of the function. And in this case, this is equal to 10, because as we get closer and closer to 3 from numbers bigger than 3, this function is approaching 10. Okay, and that's it. There's really not too much to one-sided limits. Uh, and, and in fact, so much so that maybe you're, you're thinking that, you know, why would, I, why would we bother learning them? Well, we're actually we're going to use them in two videos from now in an example to actually prove that something's continuous. So they, they are useful. They're useful in other ways, too. And, and this is what they are. So I'll see you in the next video.